Hello, everybody. I'm Jeremy Pearsons. I want to welcome you to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Right now, we're starting the new year strong on the Word of God. Today, we're going to be hearing a special teaching from my grandfather, Brother Kenneth Copeland, on learning to function in your gift. What what does that mean? You need to find out because flowing in your anointing from God and allowing the ministry of the Holy Spirit to manifest in you the power of Jesus will change your life. This message today will make you bold to be who God has called you to be and to live as a bright light for His glory. Every born again believer that has received and walks in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking with other tongues, every one of us, regardless to what you are called, whether you're called as a school teacher, whether you're called to be in business, or whether you're called as an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, or whether you're called in the ministry of help, or whether you're called to be a student, every born again, Holy Ghost baptized believer has the potential for every gift of the Spirit. Every one of them, every one of them. I, um, this one, there, there are two that, that especially come to mind to me right now in, in talking about this. Um, a young man whom I, I, I know very well, when he was just <clears throat> a teenager, had a malignant tumor on the brain. And the surgeon, this took place at the City of Faith in the Ministry of Oil Roberts. This is back before the City of Faith was turned into something else. And he was operating on him to remove that tumor from his brain. He went in there praying in the spirit. He went in there praying in tongues. And just as he began to make that incision, the Spirit of God said, stop. Now he was, he was he's praying in tongues. He said, if you make the standard cut, you will kill him. Wow. What is that? Word of knowledge. Yeah. and showed him exactly where to place that blade. Exactly where to place it. That young man is alive and well and in the ministry today. Word of knowledge function. Amen. Well, I don't understand why the the gifts of healing didn't work and he just healed him on the spot. The key word there is you don't understand. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you this. The gifts of healing worked. The young man's healed. The gifts of healing worked. Amen. Amen. The supernatural gifts of healing to manifest and just destroy that tumor were functioning in a different stream, amen, and manifested as the word of knowledge. Earnestly covet the best gifts, the best gift. What is the best gift? The one you need at the time, amen. So, and, and you could really get in and, and, and work with this in, in lots of different ways. But I use that to reveal this to us. <laughs> Don't try to pick your gift out. No. Just be a gift. Yeah. <laughs> now, when there is and on there, when there is an office of ministry, then there are 
certain gifts that, that function more predominantly as tools of the trade. Praise God. Now, Dwayne is, is one of these men that's anointed to preach in both languages. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, that thrills me. I'm set up in 2020 for total immersion again. Amen. Gloria a Dios. Amen. Muchas gracias, amigo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is the manifested ministry of Jesus. Now, Jesus ministered in the world, in the earth, when he was here in the flesh, predominantly as a prophet, predominantly as a prophet and a teacher, and he taught more than anything else. Now check it out. Study and work with and make a study of the gifts of the Spirit, and then go to the First Testament <laughs> and spot the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now, the ones that are not in the Old Testament, they are, it's mentioned, but it, it's not manifest, are tongues and interpretation of tongues. That came after Jesus was raised from the dead and in the time of the church. Amen. Now, when you get over into, into areas like, do all speak with tongues? Do all work miracles? Don't, don't, don't get hung up and confused in that. It was the norm that everybody that got born again, got baptized in the Holy Spirit and spoke with tongues. That was the norm until foolish people messed it up because listen, that's the most dangerous thing to Satan there is. You go to walking in that kind of power, my, 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 the biggest thing he could do is get you to believe that that's gone somewhere else. But he's a liar and the father of it <laughs> and deserves everything he gets. Amen. No, that's talking about, do all speak with tongues? That's talking about are all, do all operate in diverse kinds of tongues as a ministry gift. Are you listening to me? Are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No, of course not. Do all minister in tongues? No. Do all minister in the interpretation of tongues? No. It's available. Amen. Amen. But everybody that's born again ought to be a tongue talker. Amen. Amen. Because the baptism with and in the Holy Spirit of God is the gateway to the supernatural. Whoa. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes supernaturally communicating with your father. Yes. Oh, my, my, my. And people kind of skirt around it, you know, and say, well, no, no, no. And the minute you start that, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't, don't try. Don't, don't. Yeah, but do I have to speak in tongues? No, you get to. That's right. Wow. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh, but brother Copeland, what? Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, you know what you're whining about? You don't want to give up your tongue. Oh, 
I'm afraid I might say the wrong thing. No, you're not. And besides that, you know better than that. Have you never said the wrong thing? (laughs) Did God, (laughs) of course he didn't. Would a son ask for food and a father give him a serpent? Absolutely not. You being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask and give you that language? Amen. With which you can communicate with him. Out you can truly get out of your mind. (laughs) You can truly get out of your mind. I've had people say to me, Copeland, you're out of your mind. I say, yeah, don't bother me. Don't bother me. I don't want back in there. (laughs) I don't want back in my mind. I want in my spirit with God. The only mind I want into is the mind of Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So help me, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I love him. Don't you love him this morning? Come on, give him some more praise. Give him some more honor. Somebody woke up this morning with a very, very sore throat. Is that somebody in the, in the building here? Or is that someone online? Come up here, baby. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Gloria, would you come help me, please? Thank you, Lord Jesus. We don't have sore, sore throats at EMIC. Yeah, EMIC, you'll get that later. <laughs> Amen. Don't you love Jesus? Isn't it wonderful you don't have to have sore throats around here? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Gloria, put your hand right here, right, right there. No, up, right in there. Yeah. Okay. In the name, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Take a big swallow. Yeah, it's good, huh? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The word of faith, which we preach. That's what we preach here. Now we preach the word of faith. That is the mainstream of this church and the calling of this ministry. Amen. Now, everything then that has to do with faith, faith worketh by love. Well, I don't care what, I don't care uh, what calling, what stream you're flowing in and through and what's flowing through you. Oh, we all preach the love of God. Amen. 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 Absolutely. We all preach the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We all, we all preach and teach and flow in the love of God. Hallelujah. And we all do what we do by faith. The difference. And Hey, when I'm talking about Michael Koulianos, I'm talking about Daniel Colinda. I'm talking about Reinhard Bonnke. I'm talking about th- these great men and women of God, Marilyn Hickey, glory to God. That, that woman, I tell you, glory to God. She just puts her scarf on and goes right in among the Muslims and has healing meetings and they just come by the tens of thousands. Yeah. Amen. Bold as a lion. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
And boldness is another thing. Now we, we, we must in line with the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians, we must begin to seek and ask and believe we receive more boldness, boldness to do, boldness to act. It's easy in here this morning, but we're talking about on the street. That Todd White, I, I tell you, he beats all I ever saw. <laughs> I mean to tell you, he, for a long time, his wife would not go to the grocery store with him. She would not go. He just go in the grocery store and say, "Man, borrow your microphone." And yeah, there there is an anointing up here at the cash register for healing of ears. Anybody that has any problem? I'm telling you what he actually did this over and over again. Anybody that has any problem with your ears, come on up here. And people start coming up there, ganging up around the, the checkout stand and getting healed. Just getting healed all over the place. Now that's boldness with a capital B. It's necessary. It's necessary in the kingdom. How do you become that bold? You ask for it. You find the scripture on it and you believe you receive it and then you act on it. Oh, brother Copeland. No, you ain't ready yet. (laughs) Amen. It's a lot easier than you think it is. It's like everything else, John. You take that first step and it comes on you. It just comes on you. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Glory to God. I've had it. I've had it happen on the street. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and and uh, the, I'd have the Lord say, uh, uh, pray for her. Particularly the people that in, a, in wheelchairs and things like that, that more, more wheelchairs than any, anything else where I'm personally concerned. Pray for that person. Yes, sir. Amen. May I pray for you? I've never had one of them yet say, no, nah, I don't believe in that stuff. <laughs> Every one of them said, oh, yes, please do. Yes, please do. Years and years ago, in a meeting we had in Lubbock, Texas, people were staying away by the thousands. And so, <laughs> I mean, to tell you. <laughs> and it was in the middle of summertime and it was hot. This was back in the 70s. <clears throat> and I, I uh, personally knew a real estate man there. And this is the plan that the Lord gave me. And so I called him, I said, I want you to take me to the poorest part of Lubbock, Texas. So he did. And we drove down through that neighborhood. And the Lord said, now we had been there 21 days and that this was the last Saturday of the meeting and we're having a healing service. So, and the word of the Lord came to me. Now this is where boldness comes. You're walking in in a neighborhood you've never been in before. And we had certain ground rules. We're going two by two. And we're going to each house and we cannot mention the meeting. Not until we're ready to leave that place. You cannot mention the meeting. Our ground rule was from the Lord. We are people that know how to pray. Is there anyone in this house that needs prayer? We're here to pray. And we paired off. I was paired with a young man named Joe Mulford who just went home to be with the Lord here just a few weeks ago. Oh, what a man of God. And uh, different ones were paired up. Anyway, and uh, going down the, the street, knocking on these doors. One place that Gloria knocked on the door. And who was your partner, Gloria? I don't remember who. Anyway, somebody. somebody. <laughs> huh? Jesus. Jesus was your partner. Yeah, yeah, he was. Anyway, 
Gloria and her partner knocked on this, this one and this woman looked out the window and, and she, Gloria asked him, said, is there anyone here that needs prayer? She said, oh, don't go away. Don't go away. And so they stood out there for a little bit. George, she changed clothes and kind of straightened up a little bit. Poor pray, poor neighborhood. And then invited Gloria and her partner in. Joe and I went into one. I, I knocked on the door and this woman opened, opened a little peek up like that, like that. And I, I, said, I said that, you know, is there anyone here that needs prayer? You boys Pentecost? I said, <laughs> I said yes, ma'am, we are. <laughs> she said, okay, but now wait a minute. She said, we go into sister's house. So we didn't go in her house. We went to sister's house, which was up out back behind her house. And we walked in there. She, and she's talking all the way, you know, going. she said, now sister, <clears throat> she's talking about, you know, how she thinks that it happened to her and she's kind of spaced out. And out. I look back on it and, and I, I, I think probably it was Alzheimer's, but nobody said anything, but you know, just dementia. So anyway, we walked in there, Joe and I. And uh, <laughs> so, and uh, she said, you know, this old neighborhood's gotten so bad. She said, I don't get out and go to church anymore. I can't. But she said, I've been praying and asking somebody to come help me pray for sister. I'm so glad you boys are here. And so we walked in there and we just, of course, walked over there to sister. <laughs> I laid hands on her in the name of Jesus. And she said, well, glory to God. Where'd you boys come from? <laughs> she said, sister, can you see them? Why, of course she can, I can see them. Look in that refrigerator there and get them a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> she was blind. Wow. Diabetes had taken her eyesight. Didn't know, I mean, didn't know anything or anybody. Just that quick Praise received God. her healing. Just began to pray in the spirit and so did I and so did sister. <laughs> Glory to God. And so did Joe. Amen. Now this happened all day long. Just people opening the door, boldness to go, boldness to speak. Not one said, no, nah, don't be coming in here. Thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.